Hello students, today we are going to learn about the third principle of art, balance. Let's begin. For today's lesson, you will need several sheets of white paper for the lesson and your artwork, a black marker, drawing pencil, colored pencils, and a pencil sharpener. If you would like to have on hand some other supplies just in case, I would recommend having your ruler, a good eraser, and a glue stick to create a border with colored construction paper, just in case. Now many of us know balance to be a word that is used in our everyday lives as a way to say staying upright. For example, balancing on a bicycle or having good balance as we walk so we don't fall. Balance has an important meaning in art as well. Balance in art refers to the ways in which the elements, such as lines, shapes, and colors, are arranged in our artwork. There are three main types of ways to describe balance in art. Radial balance is something we are already very familiar with. Just like when we worked on our mandala art, radial balance has a center point and radiates outward. Radial balance has a pattern seen all the way around, so the image will be the same every which way you look at it. Think of daisies and sunflowers. If you turn them around, they have the same pattern in all directions. Many circular fruits and vegetables also have radial balance when you cut them in half, like this kiwi I drew. Symmetrical balance is seeing the same object from one side to the other. So for example, if we were to divide this in half, I would see a mirroring image on the opposite side. It will look the exact same, but as a reflection. Here I draw a pattern of large to small arrows pointing to one another. Here's a little bee I drew with symmetrical wings. What are some images you can think of that have symmetrical balance in the way they are viewed? Asymmetrical balance is when both sides are not the same in image or size, but the entire artwork is balanced in theme, color, shapes, textures, etc. Here we have an image where on one side we have a large tree taking up most of the space it is surrounded by whereas the other side we have multiple smaller trees that also take up a large amount of space, just in a different way. So the artwork is still balanced, but with different images on each side. Here is another example of asymmetrical balance. Here we have a large triangle on one side, and on the other side we have three smaller triangles taking up the same amount of space, so the area is still balanced. Now for our art project. Today we will be drawing an example of balance, but this time you get to choose which one you would like to demonstrate in your masterpiece. Will your art show radial, symmetrical, or asymmetrical balance? The choice is yours. Here I will draw an example of all three types of balance to give you inspiration. For radial balance, I decided to draw a citrus fruit. I took a saucer plate to create the body of the fruit. Then I drew triangles pointing towards the center throughout the inside of the circle.
Notice how each of the triangles have curved corners. I created curved corners on each of the triangles, then I added mini oval shapes inside each of the triangles to represent the pulp. This made the fruit look more realistic. For my symmetrical image, I chose to draw a butterfly. Not only are they symmetrical in size, but they are balanced in the designs, their colors, and the details of their wings. Make sure whatever you draw on the left of your art will be the same on the right and similar in size. Remember when we drew a winter landscape together? For my asymmetrical image, I decided to draw a warmer landscape. On the left, I drew large pine trees, and on the right, I have a group of smaller pine trees. To balance the background, we have mountains with really tiny pine trees on the peaks. Asymmetrical balance is also a great way to show balance with other elements like color and texture. I decided to outline everything in black marker to make my images stand out more. If you are watching and drawing along with me, pause the video here and press play when you are ready to color. Time to color our artwork. To make my art really pop, I played with varying pressures. I pressed really hard with my colored pencils towards the inside of my orange to make sure the color looked really bright and bold on the inside. And then I used lighter pressure to make the color lighter towards the edges of my orange. Remember, you can also mix colors to add variety as well. I started coloring in yellow pencil on the edges of the fruit over the orange to give it some variety. For the butterfly, I matched whatever colors I used on one side to be the same on the other. Make sure the left wing matches the right wing.
If you are drawing a landscape for an asymmetrical image, remember your primary and secondary colors, your complementary colors, your cool tones and your warm tones. Using your color wheel is always a great tool when adding color to your images. And here are my three examples of balance. How did yours turn out? Think back to all the past art we have created together. Did they show balance? In what way did our past artwork show balance? Now that you know how to add balance to your art, you have another tool to make your masterpieces even more beautiful. Until next time, take care and stay creative.